Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Suzuki reaction. I'm using this video to wrap up my series on nucleophilic aromatic substitution because it has some things in common with nucleophilic aromatic substitution, particularly uh, the reagent used to supply the other, the other uh, coupling partner is nucleophilic and um, there is a halide leaving group that is displaced. The general uh, type of reaction, and, and I'm talking about the arene version. This actually works on other uh, sp2 halides, but arenes are sort of more, are, are, I don't want to say more common, but they're, they're what I'm talking about. Uh, and This requires uh, some sort of organoboron compound, and I'm going to leave these as X's for the moment. They don't have to be the same X. I want to draw some examples. Um, this reaction needs water, and it needs a base, and uh, it needs uh, a palladium species, often like palladium chloride or palladium acetate. Don't use palladium acetate. Uh, or palladium acetate with or palladium with some some inorganic or some some orga organic ligands or, or whatever, and what this does is it replaces the X on the the arene with the R group from the boron compound. And now we're going to talk about how this works. Okay. Um, generally, instead of a a mechanism for this reaction is generally presented as something called a catalytic cycle. Uh, where it focuses on on all of the different things the palladium is doing because the palladium is mediating uh, all of the bond forming and bond breaking, but it's not focusing on uh, arrow pushing and electron movement kind of stuff because some of the bonding modes are weird and some of the reactions might be radical and some might be two electrons and it's, and sometimes the the arrows that we would push are are, are kind of dissatisfying. And we don't and the palladium is held in solution by a variety of ligands, ions, and other things that hold it in solution that we generally don't draw all of them because there could be a lot of them. So the first step of the mechanism involves palladium reacting with our aryl halide. Uh, and you know, like always, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Uh, and uh, triflate and other sulfonate esters and phosphate esters and some other things can work here too. Um, and this first step is something called oxidative addition. And so palladium, somehow our palladium species gets to be palladium zero. So that means that it has no, you know, no, it's in the oxidation state zero. Um, it inserts itself into the carbon halogen bond. We've seen other metal insertions. The magnesium does this for Grignard reagents. Um, this thing, carbon palladium bond is actually less polar. Palladium is only a little bit less electronegative than, than carbon is. The next step involves the uh, organoboron reagent, which itself isn't as reactive as it could be. And so um, what actually happens here, since this is done in, done in the presence of water and base, you initially get activation of the organoboron compound by reacting with hydroxide. And then this forms the boron and whatever my X's are, OH, our group, and the boron has an, a negative charge. So now we have this activated boron thing. Do not want to drag around my ring. There we go. And so this then reacts with our aryl palladium kind of compound. 
if you get a swap, uh, the step is called ligand exchange or transmetallation, even though boron's not a metal. Every other type of reaction in this 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 class of reactions, uh, the other reagent over here is a metal, so it kind of got the name transmetallation, even though it's not really a metal. And then while this is going on, we swap uh, the R on boron for X. So palladium and boron are trading R for X. Whatever X is, uh, X is usually something that forms a stronger bond to boron than it does to palladium. And then finally, the last step involves something called reductive elimination, where the uh, R group and the aryl group come off of palladium and form a carbon-carbon bond. And so this, uh, the true power of this reaction is forming of carbon-carbon bonds. And in, in a minute, we're gonna see how this is really, really super versatile. Okay. It tolerates a lot of functional groups, for example. But R can be almost anything. I mean, it can. There's some things it can't be, but it, it can. This reaction is very tolerant of functional groups. I don't, I don't want it italicized. Right. They're very functional, tolerant functional groups. The arene can have lots of functional groups on it as well. Okay, uh, the, the BX2, some of the common things for BX2 include, um, like, here, I need my R, and we have boron, and the boron might actually be like a boronic acid, so the X's can be OH's. Um, R, the X's can be, uh, we have like a boronate ester where, where they're like, it's either cyclic or acyclic, they're alkyl groups on the oxygen. Um, the, R can, uh, the, the boron group can actually be part of uh some crazier structures like the the boro by bora by cyclo no name thing that i'm failing to draw here it is sort of and i have an extra carbon in here so that's that's why it's feeling weird there you go or a bicyclonone, so this is like uh, RBBN. So there are a lot of different opportunities in uh, what the boron thing can be. There are a lot of different functional groups. The arene can have almost any other substituent on it. The R group can have almost any other substituent on it. And in fact, replacing boron with other elements generates other variations of this reaction. Uh, let's see, tin is the stilly coupling and uh, silicon is the Hiyama coupling and copper is the Sanagashira. This is especially useful for copper acetylides and Zinc is called the uh, Nagishi reaction. These are almost all Japanese names. Most of these reactions were invented in Japan by a Japanese chemist. Um, and there are other variations of Grignard reagents and, and so on. Um, and, and most of these reactions, especially the, the boron version and the tin version are um, are fairly versatile and tolerate a wide range of functional groups. So this concludes my video on nucleophilic aromatic or, or on the Suzuki reaction and uh, the end of my series on 
nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Thank you for watching.